The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Every so often, the people who put together the lectionary in their divine, wonderful wisdom, taking all of the scriptures and taking them either into a one-year set of readings or three, we use a three-year lectionary, they set them all up and they organize them. Every so often, they, I think one of the ordinary members of the committee was in charge. This is one of those Sundays. So which of the landmines should the pastor step on? Should he step on the Old Testament lesson about hypocritical thinking and actions, which none of you have, thankfully, so we don't need to preach on that one? Should he go to the, to the ordinary obnoxious, the Apostle Paul, who gives us two, not just one, but two landmines? Let's talk about praying for all people. That's annoying. Or let's talk about the role of women in the church. Don't want to step on that one in public. Or do we go to Jesus himself, red letters, Mr. Red Letters, Word of God incarnate, who gives us a parable that people to this day are going, huh? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. So let's talk about prayer. You got to step on one. Let's step on that one. And when Paul tells the people uh, to pray, when he tells Timothy, I want you to pray, Every, I want people, not just you, Timothy, but people, Christians everywhere to pray, it sounds good, and we would all agree that sounds like a good, noble, healthy, spiritual thing to do. Pray for all. All people. All right, that's a bit annoying. Well, let's pray for your kings and your rulers and your leaders. That's a, that's a bridge too far, guys. Don't want to do that. I will pray for my leaders with whom I agree. How's that? Is that good, Lord? I could do that. I will pray for one side of the aisle, but I won't pray for the other side. Oh, wait a minute. I will pray one prayer for the other side of the aisle. And that's I will go into the King James Old Testament and I will use the words smite or smote. Lord, smite them. I like that. We don't use that word enough today. Try that in your prayers. As you pray for those you disagree with, use the word smite. Lord, this person really, they cut me off. I can't believe it. I was in line next at McDonald's, and they cut me off at that one. Smite them. And just wait for the lightning to strike. That's how we want to pray. When we want to pray for people, we're told to pray for people we disagree with. Or our enemies. But that obnoxious Paul doesn't mean that. He's actually listening to his master, Jesus. We talked about not hating our enemies, but loving them. And then when we do that, it has a side effect. We don't do it because it will cause them consternation. 
We do it because we're following him. But in doing so, it actually is like putting a pile of heaping, uh, burning coals on top of their head. They can't handle it. And I would think they can't handle it today, especially, because we are such a polarized group of people. By political party, by race, by economic standing, by Oregon State, Oregon. Are you, are you a, a beaver or a duck? And the two, shall not, the two shall not come together. You see those houses where there's two flags up? And you know, that's, that's, a, that's a split household. You got to pray for them. We love this stuff, politically speaking or sports-wise. You can't turn on ESPN without one person yelling at the other person. So then you say, that's enough of that. I'll go to one of the news channels where you find one person yelling at another person. This is how we operate in our culture. We're to be different. In a culture where there's two sides, there is a healthy middle and that's where we're called to be. We're called to defend the truth. We're called to, stay, to stand with that which is right, which God has said, and we cannot compromise that. But at the same time, we're called to love and have compassion. Instead of praying that the Lord might smite these people on the other side, you guys are getting the, the brunt of it because it's just easy to smite the right-hand side for some reason today. Nothing personal. But we might want to say, I want to smite them. What if you, what if you prayed for their well, well-being? How might that affect the way that you view them? What if you prayed for the people on the opposite side of your political aisle? Not that they would be destroyed, but that they might be preserved that this great country that we call home, with all of its freedoms and all of its blessings, might be what Paul told Timothy, so that God's people can live in a place of quietness and stability. What a crazy idea. What a crazy idea to be in the middle and pray for those with whom you disagree. Whether they're across the political aisle or across the street, or across the kitchen table? What if you prayed for them? The apostles calls for supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. And to lift these up for all people in all places. What if we were a people who put our prayers where our supposed heart is? I don't think it's an accident that the, that the apostle, immediately after telling Timothy that we need to pray for our leaders, then talks about the leader, the big guy. He talks about the creator of all things. And he says, I'll tell you what his heart is. The heart of the big guy is to love all people. And he desires that all people come to a knowledge of the truth and to be saved. The heart of God wants all people to have the light bulb come on to see who Jesus is and call on him and be saved. Therefore, Christian, pray. Pray with love. Pray with conviction. Pray with the heart of God. Especially pray for those with whom you disagree. Pray for those you consider to be an enemy. Pray for those who rankle you. Pray for those who are an authority over you. Pray for them that the Lord would preserve them would give them wisdom and strength and to govern wisely. Martin Luther once made the comment that he would rather have a competent Turk running the government 
than an incompetent Christian. For him, you have to understand, the Ottoman Empire was, was pressing against Europe, trying to come in and overrun it. To extinguish Christianity in Europe. And Luther says, I want somebody who knows what they're doing so that there's stability and there's certainty and there's quietness and peace. Rather than someone whose heart is really, really good but has no clue. Your leaders don't have to share every ideal with you. We want them just to govern well. That's tough. That's, and I, I confess that. You can look up here and say, yeah, pastor, you, you're saying the right thing. But your pastor on a Wednesday morning can get carried away when he's with the guys. There's something about a cup of coffee at Denny's. It's more powerful than whiskey. It brings out your real nature. And there's time, and I confess to you, it's difficult for me to pray for those that hurt me. It's hard for me to pray for people that I look at and scratch my head and go, how in the world did they get that position? It's hard for me to pray for those who are doing the wrong thing. But that's exactly what God has done for me. Paul would have that as part of his, his life and his heritage as the chief of sinners who had received the grace and the love and the mercy of God, who then, in spite of his own human prejudices, did the very best he could to share that grace and that mercy and that love with others. Pick up the heart of God. Pray for all people in all places. Pray for your rulers. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your family. Pray for those you love, near and far. Pray with the heart of God. For he promises to hear us. He's listening, and he loves. Amen. The Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Mark Adams of Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and it's my prayer that as you hear the Word of God, you'll grow in knowledge of Him, but more than that, you'll grow in faith and trust in Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you scan the code that's on the screen, you'll head to our website where you'll find more resources and links to learn more about, about the Lord, about the Church, and about the Lutheran Church. You can also submit prayers that can be prayed either in worship or by myself privately. There are a list of topical prayers available if you want to pray by yourself for issues that you're facing. You're welcome to join us either online for worship or Sunday mornings in our building here in, in Hermiston or Christ Alone in Ione, Oregon. Again, the Lord be with you. May he bless you and keep you now and always. Amen.